first and foremost, we want to ask the patient to make a thumbs up sign because that will help us to illuminate the structures that we are looking for. So have your patient go into full flexion of the second, third, fourth, and fifth digits. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. And then we're gonna take that thumb into carpometacarpal extension. And when you do that, you can see, because I have very tendony hands, that the snuff box is popping right out, right here. So this is what we call the anatomical snuff box. It's created by the triangle of two tendons and the distal end of the radius. So these two tendons are extensor pollicis longus, which comes up and attaches to the distal phalange to allow full extension of that thumb. And then we have over here on the more radial aspect, the extensor pollicis brevis, which comes up here and just attaches to the proximal phalange of the thumb. And so that allows us to get this thumbs up position. Now, all the tendons that are in the hand travel in little compartments, and some of those compartments are shared in tendinous sheets, and that helps um, lubricate the passage as we do the motions of the hand so that our tendons can glide nice and easy. And so, a little surprise here, with extensor pollicis brevis, we have a little friend traveling with it. And this friend is easier to find if you take the thumb and just kind of roll it around. For me, it kind of works best when I go into a bit of a deduction. And I can even kind of, there we go, ulnarly deviate to make it pop a little bit. So as you can see here, especially if I pull this back a little bit and make my skin taut, here we have extensor pollicis brevis, and right here, you see how it makes a V with this tendon here. And this tendon is actually abductor pollicis longus. And abductor pollicis longus is going to actually attach on the more palmar aspect of the thumb to allow abduction. So we have the extensors longus and brevis, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, allowing that motion of extension of the carpometacarpal joint. And then we have abductor pollicis longus, which pulls and allows more of the abduction of the CMC joint. Of course, there's other muscles that go into these motions as well. They don't ever act in a silo, but point being is that EPB doesn't travel alone. It travels with a friend right next to it, which is APB, excuse me, APL, yeah, abductor pollicis longus. Now, why do we care about the snuff box, right? Um, obviously, the tendons are easy to find on, nuff on their own, so why do we have to name this little cavern here created by these tendons? Well, the anatomical snuff box is a landmark that we use in any kind of hand therapist or any kind of orthopedic practitioner. So physical therapists or occupational therapists or even orthopedic surgeons can use this landmark to find something special inside. So if you take and make this thumbs up and find the snuff box, you wanna place a finger or a thumb in the middle of that snuff box. And then you can find a special bone by ulnarly deviating, so taking your wrist and turning it toward the direction of the ulna, so away from you, and you'll feel a little bone pop in to your hand. So if you radially deviate, come back, it'll go away. If you ulnarly deviate, it'll come back. And that bone is the scaphoid bone, and that is one of the carpal bones, so one of your wrist bones. And this is a great technique to start to find the other carpals because the scaphoid is pretty big. It's pretty easy to find. So once you find the scaphoid, you can start to palpate around 
joint spaces and find the other carpals. Of course, that's not the only way, but it's an easy way. And so that is your snuff box, the tendons that create it, the buddy that travels with, and what you can find inside. And now just a little fun fact about my hands is that I actually have some pretty crazy hands, a um, couple of genetic abnormalities, if you will. So one thing you might notice here is that I have what is called a club thumb. And if you look, my right and left thumb actually do not match. So that is an interesting little genetic misprint where my distal phalange on my right thumb didn't come out exactly as long as the other one and it's a little bit wider and flatter. So it's called a club thumb. And I actually met somebody recently who had one too. And we had a, a bonding moment because I've never met anybody else that has a club thumb. But then also, if you take a look at my hands, this is actually bilateral on both sides. You'll notice that my fifth digit is pretty short. If you look on your own hands and you don't have the same genetic abnormality that I do, you'll possibly notice that the end of your distal phalanx of the fifth digit usually lines up with about the distal interphalangeal joint of the fourth finger. So it should line up with that third knuckle of the ring finger. Now, if you were to take this finger and actually move it up a little bit, you would notice that it's actually about the right size. So actually, the problem is with my metacarpal bone. So I realized that my metacarpal bone, only on the pinky side of both hands, is small. And actually, my grandmother on my father's side and my sister both have the same thing. Kind of interesting. So. That's a little tidbit about hands. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Smash that subscription button and comment below if you have questions. Thank you.